is My TV Charleston's High School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. My TV Charleston's High School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet, is back in the low country. And ladies and gentlemen, we got a good one tonight. It's the Goose Creek Gators and the Somerville Green Wave. Ladies and gentlemen, a top 10 matchup in our first matchup back. We got a good one on our hands. We certainly do. And how exciting is this? Jack DeLongshaw here with Natalie Spala. And Jack, you mentioned it, a top 10 matchup. How rare is that that we are starting off our high school hoop season with perhaps the most highly anticipated game here on our broadcast slate? And it is going to be a good one, exactly like you said. Two of the most respected coaches, really, in the entire low country. You're going to get two teams that are going to play up and down the entire game. A lot of energy, a lot of effort, Natalie. We got a good one on our hands. We do. And we have a lot of players we're going to talk about here tonight. And we're we're going to start with our two top players that we have our eyes on and starting with Somerville. His name, Yannick Smith. It's a name you're going to be hearing a lot from today. This is the guy who, according to head coach David Long, is the star, but he's got so many supporting cast members, but just an outstanding bench. We're going to hear a lot of them tonight, but other than that, Yannick Smith, we're looking over at the Goose Creek side and we got Elijah Dates, another guy that we can expect big things from here tonight. He's a defensive guy. He's also capable of scoring both in the paint and from the outside. So another one we're going to keep our eyes on here tonight, Jack. I think the common theme tonight, folks, star players, a lot of star power on that bench as well. My TV, Charleston Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet, coming back just soon. Welcome back, folks, as we're live from Goose Creek High School. It's the, Goose, it's the Goose Creek Gators and the Somerville Green Wave. Jack DeLongshaw sitting alongside Natalie Spala. We've got one heck of a ball game on our hands, folks. A top 10 matchup. Goose Creek, number two in the state of South Carolina. But Somerville Green Wave, a lot of experience over on that sidelines. As we see Coach David Long getting their guys ready to go. Number six in the state of South Carolina. Natalie, what do we expect to see out of both uh, sidelines today? Well, I think what's so interesting about this one is that they are pretty similar in terms of what they really want their strategy to be what they bring to the floor these are two teams that have ample ample athletic guys that are capable of taking a game into their hands and really making it their own so we're going to see who takes control first these first few minutes of this one jack are going to be so important absolutely as we see coach long in the sideline getting his guys ready to go 11th season over at some he's a second career coach now you want to talk about one of the guys that's mostly respected in this area 
from building an unbelievable culture here at Goose Creek. That's the guy I'd like call pioneering captain of ship over at Goose Creek. Uh, spent a year over at North Charleston. Won a state championship in his first season now. How he's rare. In his 12, he's been here since 2012. He's got an unbelievable record, but what he's really admired for is the culture, the team-based, oriented role that he's created over at Goose Creek. we got a really fun matchup. Checkers, not chess. These guys are going to have a lot of fun on the sidelines tonight. Exactly. We're going to talk about these head coaches more throughout the night, but you mentioned his first state championship, his only state championship is Blake Hall in his first year at North Charleston. He said to us it was a blessing in disguise that he had won that championship in his first coaching year as a head coach and he said it really put things into perspective that this is not about trophies this is not about championships this is about developing players into people and people who are they're going to be far down the road when they're no longer on this basketball court jack perfect as we head back over to the summer lineup we're going to see the starting five the night for somerville starting in that forward position number 15 jay chisholm he's the senior 6'3 180 the kid can absolutely fly he's a human highlight reel at guard, you're going to see number two, Mike Jenkins. Coach Long told us there's a lot of names in that lineup. Mike Jenkins is the glue guy, captain, leader. You're going to see Melvin Teal playing the guard position. Yannick Smith, the superstar we not mentioned in the players we watch. And then Yazir Smith starting at center. Second career start for Big Bell. And as we see Goose Creek on the other sidelines, Goose Creek, eight, nine seniors have been here since their sixth grade year. And in this lineup, you're going to see a lot of them. Starting at guard, number four, Elijah Bates. He's a 6'2 senior. Again, sixth grade, he's been in this program. Learned a lot. Dante Taylor, maybe one of the more athletic players in the state of South Carolina. Battle. Coach Hall says he's receiving some Division three offers, but maybe the best lateral offer he's seen. The freshman, number 11, Jaquel Brown, is the point guard. He's a really special talent. We're going to talk a lot about him tonight. Number 24, Shane Potts, the shooting guard. That's got absolute bouncy ability at the two-guard position. And then rounding out the lineup for the Goose Creek Gators, it's going to be Hezekiah Smith, the big fella. Really anchoring things down low as you see him. Look at him, 6'4", the junior. I'm telling you right now, you don't think the football field isn't beckoning for the big fella. He's got a lot of touch down low. You're going to see a lot of Hezekiah Smith in the paint tonight. I'm excited, Jack. Now, we, we just went over, of course, the starting five for both teams, but get used to seeing eight, nine, ten guys come off that bench here tonight. So they're going to keep things interesting for us for sure. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of talent. Nine seniors on this team, but as you see Jaquel Brown checking in, he's a freshman, but I'm telling you right now, for those who haven't seen the young man play yet, he does not play like a freshman. The game's in slow motion for you. As we check in now, Natalie, it's going to be really important. Both teams playing very similar. But today's keys to the game, Cruz Chevrolet on Rivers. You've got a friend of car business. Natalie, as you take a look for both teams, keys to success tonight. I really think when you're looking at the Somerville side of things, they just need to take care of the ball. That Goose Creek defense, it is absolutely suffocating. So they're going to make them uncomfortable. At least they're going to try to. So another thing, you want to dominate the boards. There's so many scores really on both sides of this sideline but limiting each other's second and third chance opportunities is going to be huge for these teams and then let's look over to Goose Creek play physically but be under control now that is one thing because this is a team we're going to see pressing perhaps most of the game maybe right off the tip here and you want to make sure you're keeping your emotions in check and really staying under control Jack absolutely as we can see these teams getting off the hot start Shane Potts picks the pass. I'm telling you, the kid can really fly, but he does come down. He's going to travel almost immediately. But in those keys of the game, you mentioned Natalie. Some are going to dominate the boards. This is, again, one of the, I think, maybe one of the most athletic teams in the state of South Carolina. As you see a dump in pass, it's going to be picked off by Dante Taylor. But a lot of football guys in this green wave offense, they've got five guys now averaging more than five rebounds a game. That's unheard of at the South Carolina high school level. This is going to be really key to watch them dominate the glasses. We see the point guard already on the glass. Melvin Teal goes coast to coast to start the game. And early and often, the glue guy, Mike Jenkins, the corner jumper, not down after the assist from Yannick Smith. Yannick Smith, the name we're going to see a lot, distributing the ball early now. And here we are seeing this full court press. I mentioned the Goose Creek full court press, but that is something we're going to definitely see from Somerville, too. They want to make guys uncomfortable, but that's something that Blake Hall said that they will welcome with open arms. That's what he preaches a lot at practice. You see the air pass there. Shane Potts picks it off, and again, 
Goose Creek's got numbers, but with the athleticism from both sides, you're going to see pace of play is going to be massive tonight. Right, so I, I definitely think they need to keep things under control in these first few minutes of that game as the freshman Brown making it rain here in the creek. The creek sold out tonight. Standing room only. You see a couple seats open, <laughs> but the Friday night high school hoops game is bad. Jacob Brown. Ooh. As we see the David Ayer sponsored replay bug, you're going to see the, the glue guy, Mike Jenkins, the corner jumper, but Jaquel Brown says, what you can do, I can do better. From three-point land, the freshman, I'm telling you, so calm, cool, and collected is the freshman. And again, similar at the college ranks, if you watch a Division I college basketball game, West Virginia comes to mind, Press Virginia, full court. <laughs> We're going to see a lot of that tonight, Natalie, out of both sidelines. And that's why we're saying they got to be in control, but we're already seeing they're not afraid to let that shot fly. And look at the boards right now that Goose Creek is picking up. As a guy Smith unable to corral that offensive rebound as it's going to head the other way, but as we see Shane Potts, the sophomore there, you're going to see a lot of guys crashing the boards. You know, we're just two minutes in, both benches won't want to be cleared here before that first media timeout. Unscared to do so, but again, Jock Bell Brown got to trade some 94 feet all night long. And it's going to take three or four guards to do it, especially with talent from Melvin Teal as he possesses a point guard position. And we're going to see a lot of different looks defensively from Goose Creek here tonight, but that's a matchup that I think we're going to like oh, tonight is that Teal the Brown. Cut. There he is again. Jay Chisholm with a really nice hand one finish around the basket as we check back at the David Ayler replay. The finish, good. How about the find for Mike Jenkins, though, might be better. I was going to say, that fact that the pass actually made it through, I think, is most impressive. <laughs> More impressive than the finish at the rim, but well done. Again, as you see, three names checking in already for some of It's going to be number 10, Kenny Brown. Number 30, Jonas Nelson. Number 21, Delvin Davis. And this is something we're going to see not only because there are so many guys that are capable of filling roles on the floor, but at the fast, fast pace that we're seeing this team, you got to get guys in and out because they're going to get tired pretty quick. See an offensive lead down there from Kenneth Brown. The kick out, the three from the top, the paint. Jay Chisholm there for another offensive rebound. Kick around the corner, but again, we mentioned the names on that rebounding. Jay Chisholm averaging five rebounds. Again, there's going to be a lot of green wave bodies around the basket. We see the third offensive rebound in just this sole possession. Yeah, that is not a recipe for success over there if you're Blake Hall. Without a question, but they like these numbers. Watch the sophomore. Thought you were going to get a first time on the back. A really That's okay. nice basket from Shane Potts as we see for the first time in the, the fast break box about low country cross spaces, building relationships that last as we see some new faces from Goose Creek checking in. The first gator that's going to check in is going to be Daquan Amlin. Let's take a look at this fast break. I think he got a little help from the where, where that ball actually came off the rim. He had a nice little uh, head start above everyone else, but nice layup off the off the other end. I'm telling you, doesn't the sophomore just he carries himself in such a different light as you see Daquan Amlet checking in for the Gators. Charles Bailey, the third, carrying the point guard position as well now, but Potts, such a smooth player at such an early age. Just trying to force it there. Samuel sits back in the zone. The fast break pass. What a find. Unable to keep it down as Kenneth Lager kicks it out of bounds. But again, you can see already another line change for Somerville. A fresh five. Yeah, this, these are teams that want to get out and go. And you, you saw it right there. You're coming away with the turnover. Push it down court. A little mishandle with the ball. But you're going to be seeing that a lot tonight. Just that, that fast pace of speed and... And they just want to get out and go. Absolutely. The various major checks in for the Gators. You know, we talked about it, especially with the college basketball landscape the way it is today. A lot of transfer portal action. One of Coach Hall's, as that pass is deflected out of bounds by Charles Baylor, third. 
Well, Coach Hall might be most excited about this team. Again, nine seniors, eight of which he's had since sixth grade. He mentioned to us in our interview earlier this week that loyalty doesn't lie in place anymore, but with people. He's gotten his group to trust in him. As we see another Gator checking in, that's going to be Sam Crabtree defending the on ball. There's a lot of faces. Nine of those seniors. The leader of this team, though, Elijah Dates. As we see him walking back up the floor. A skilled, skilled shooter that you mentioned in our players to watch, Natalie. So you see Dates take the ball from the official. Got to imagine the Gators have something drawn up here to free him up. So Crabtree finds Amlet. Amlet's going to be fouled by the star, Yannick Smith. Seen a different look. Obviously, some of those a team that loves to get up and down like we've talked about. Full court press. They've been sitting back in this 1-3-1 one, one zone as we've seen from the Daily Air replay. That was wrong. I think that foul is going to be charged number five, Melvin Teal. And again, a good find. Somerville slowed them down in these last few possessions. So Goose Creek really taking the time to just slow their game down, pick apart that defense. It doesn't have to be run and gun all the time. And the most mature teams are the ones, or at least according to both of these head coaches we spoke to earlier, are the ones that are able to keep playing their game. I mean, both of these teams, they're making it their goal to make the other uncomfortable. So whoever can stick with that game plan the best and most consistently is the one who's perhaps going to walk away with a win today here, Jack. Absolutely. As we saw on the other end, Daquan Amlet knocking down both free throws from the charity strike. Those free throws are brought to you by Real League Ray Opportunity School. A rich tradition of individual learning as we see some unbelievable passing on the other end. Yannick Smith able to capitalize. Corner pocket three ball from the junior. How about it? Wow. Sometimes the best defense turns as their offense as Jay Chisholm's heading back to the free throw line. I think it's obviously his ability to get up and play above the rim, but his second chance efforts. Oh, yes. Get up and down, back up off the floor the second time. Jay Chisholm, special athlete. Yeah, he's a guy that doesn't quit, whether it's offense, defense. If the ball's in his hand, he's going to do something well with it. And he's getting perhaps two free ones out of this. As you see again, heading back to the charity strike for the Will Lou Gray Opportunity School free throw. A rich tradition of individualized learning as we see. They, uh, excuse me, Jaquel Brown checking back in. What better guy to turn to than the freshman? Press getting Goose Creek some troubles here early. He'll slow things down. Well, after four and a half minutes, it's been a barn burner. Somerville up nine to seven as we head to break. As we see Coach David Long in Somerville taking an early 9-7 lead in just 3.37 to go in the first quarter. Jack DeLong shall be joined by partner Natalie Smile and Natalie. 
A lot up and down, a lot of talent here on this court early and often. And I'm here in Blue Street, South Carolina. I think more or less what we expected from the jump is that we have already seen lots of guys get minutes in this game, and that is going to be exactly what the what the case is moving forward, Jack. But in terms of the pace of play, also kind of what we were expecting to see from both of these teams who are run and gun type teams. They want to get you get you going and really score often and early. Oh, Jay Chisholm. Almost had himself a pick the pocket and on cue he does it the second time. Full length court pass to Yannick Smith. He's got the one-on-one -on -one matchup that he's gonna look for all night, but solid defense from Daquan in with his Elijah Dates gonna look to slow things down on the other end for the Gators. No points there for the Green Wave, but you gotta acknowledge the, how quick they get up. They get the rebound, their eyes are looking at the opposite end of the court as we see it right here. Yannick Smith, the easy, easy layup off the other end, but he's getting some help from his teammate. And that's what I, that's what we're expecting, and that's what we're seeing here today, Jack, is they, their eyes up all the time. I think it's all that of their existence as the various major. When I'm down three in the sweet pass, Jaquel Brown, great court vision from the freshman point guard. I did. I think you talked that one to existence, though. <laughs> they caught Hamlet. Picks a pocket. We're going to get our jump, first jump ball, and that is it's heading the other way. But that fast break brought to you by Low Country Calm Places. David A. Wallace takes it back to the instant replay. Calm, cool, corner pocket three. Lavarius Major wants the people to hear about it. And good idea by Brown. He, it looked like he had that dribble penetration going into the paint. Kicked the ball out. Defender collapsed a little bit, able to get that shot up. Smooth and pure. With just two to play, Somerville still takes 11-10 lead. You see both sidelines, coaches, hands on the head. I think they're trying to catch the break as we are as well <laughs> in the booth. I know, I gotta take a breath. I want that. It's a pro man rebound from Delvin Davis. A 5'11 senior playing like a 6'11. We see the second string in for Somerville is a little step back corner three. Oh, how about the freshman? Joe Josiah, Jojo Taylor. And why himself. not? He is feeling himself. You know, with a lot of names that Somerville is going to run and play through tonight, it was important for Coach Long to get freshmen into the game like Josiah Jojo Taylor to play this game. How about They play in with the hands, with the hands on the other end. And you mentioned the depth in terms of the grades of these guys. I mean, you see nine seniors over there on Goose Creek, but it's not exactly the case for the Green Wave. But that's kind of how David Long, he says he likes it because it's not every year that they have so much turnover. They have guys locked and loaded, ready to fill those positions as seniors get out of the program. We're gonna try to get that back, get that back foot pivoted, slid right in it, but watch it. How about this step through? Sometimes with it the just it, face. it takes you a little long. And you just you want it, you don't want it, and he wanted it. Pull the trigger, young man. And then Potts on the other end with the answer. Or excuse me, not Potts. Daquan Amlet. Southpaw. Smooth stroke. And that's what's so dangerous about teams like this when you go to game plan and the scouting reports are so different every night. Goose Creek 14 and 1 in the season. Every night it's a different guy that can beat you. It might be Shane Potts. It might be Elijah Bates giving you a 20 piece. Because that three is going to be long from Yannick Smith. But how about the second effort from the sophomore? Not once, not twice. Well, how about from the young guy, Mike Jenkins, the new guy, the captain with the tip in his teal, misses his first two putbacks. But on the other end, right back at you. Goose Creek, I'm telling you, they don't give you a second to celebrate if you're good about it. They're right back on the other end, but defense swarming on the other end for the Green Wave. And we haven't seen a team thus far. Let's go ahead and take a look at this replay. Wow, and you got to appreciate the effort there by Melvin Teal. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And there you go, Mike Jenkins finishing it off with the bucket. I think he was looking into the rim. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Unreal think it's fair hops to say. from the 6-2 senior. Beautiful hand-eye coordination. And how about this one from distance? Elijah Dates, that is his range, and he will let that fly. Oh, wow. As we've seen, seven minutes into this thing, just 14.7 to go in the half. 
These officials are really letting these guys play. They double in the corner on the first pass. It's a red zone defense. They double the pass. Charles Bailey third travels. As we got the final seconds of this quarter, ticking down. Yep, you want the ball in your point guard's hand. It's going to be Melvin Teal with just three to go. Yep. And a really nice move around the bat basket. Some acrobatics, but you look at the sheer size of Melvin right. Teal. 6'2", 205. Of all the football guys that have been transcending two sport athletes, Melvin Teal really focused on his game on the hardwood. But he sure as heck looks like a linebacker. Wow, what a pass. That got right deep in there into the paint. Good thing for Goose Creek they weren't able to capitalize. And the score after one, Somerville with a three-point lead, 16 to 13. You see Jay Chisel there. Make sure to come back and stay tuned. Green Wave 16, Gators 13. Mike TV Charleston High School hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. And again, as we take a look at Blake Hall, what he's built over that Goose Creek sideline. A top 10 matchup tonight, folks. That's just really incredible for both programs, but more importantly, basketball in the entire low country. I think so too. And these are two coaches that also told us that they want to make low country hoops relevant. I know head coach David Long, he said, sometimes he thinks that this area of the state is overlooked by the Midlands and, and really the upstate. And he's just so thankful that we get a matchup here today with two top 10 teams that are able to bring some recognition back to an area that has so much talent that perhaps just takes a little bit of a back row. So much young talent, the perfect blend of veteran leadership is that pass is going to be thrown out by John Smith over in the crowd. And the Eric pass is, you see, Yannick Smith there averaging 18 a game so far. The green wave, five boards a game. The two time All State wide receiver on the gridiron. The region player of the year in the area. Elite level scoring in the area. Scoring three facets. Yeah, if you're not familiar with Somerville football, Smith was often the guy on the receiving end of Campbell McCurry's long passes downfield. He was usually the guy walking into the end zone. So that's all you need to know about, about Smith and really the success of that Somerville football team, too. Talk about athletes. You see Dante Taylor there for the Gators. Taylor. There's been a lot of high profile athletes. Even some that play the NFL level. We talked to Coach Hall earlier this week. He said that Dayton. Uh, Dante Taylor might be the best lateral athlete he's coached in the last decade. Yeah. We're seeing some deep waters. Taylor, a high five, that can really defend the league level. Yeah, you don't see a guy too often with the frame of him. Oh. 
Melvin Dino frees up the big fella. Fella. Razier Smith. Ooh. We got Brown. Diving into the second row right here. How about that? We take the David Ayler. Take a look. West Shore. Points in the paint. Maybe not a prettier find in the paint so far tonight than from the sophomore, Melvin Teal, to the big fellow Yazer Smith. Yazer Smith, the little brother of Yannick Smith. That looks a little bit. I was gonna say, <laughs> his nickname, interesting. We'll go through nicknames here or not tonight because David Long has made them a part of this roster we're looking at. Yes, your Smith, his nickname is Fats. Fats. That was a fat three ball from Jake Chisholm <laughs> from the outside. They see you have to around the basket, but the better garden from that town as well. How about that? How about the effort? I'm telling you, as we take a look back, another great find from Yannick Smith. He steps right into it, corner three, and he loves it, but it doesn't stop there. It's full court pressure right on the other end. You can see a nice defensive play from Elijah Dates in the corner to maybe eliminate another three as you see David Long. I'm telling you, this is a guy that loves this team. His team's makeup, we talked about it early. Hey, you know, you don't want to get ahead of yourself, Coach, but it's a state championship aspirations too early. He was quick to tell us, hey, we don't care about the ranking. Sixth in the state is great, but he's just really involved. And he's inclined to make sure that this team, oh, how about that play from Dante Taylor? You guys are smooth able to crowd, but he wants to make sure that this team reaches its full potential. With as many athletes as he has, they really seem to buy into what Coach Tom is teaching. And I think that's something that you can say about on the other side of the sideline is Blake Hall's team. He doesn't care about the accolades. Like we said, he had won his first state championship in his first year at North Charleston. He doesn't care about that. They care about the development of these players, of course, the titles, the accolades, the state championships. They all mean something, but they're not the top priority for either of these coaches. She's Dante Taylor going up and playing amongst the trees, coming down the rebound, but traveling as he falls to the ground. It's a really crucial point in this game. The summer where he's going with 18 run to extend the lead up eight. You see, a quiet run, I'd not say. Go away. What a huge bucket. What a huge bucket from Chisholm right there in the corner. He said once, twice, how about thrice? Oh, three from Jake Chisholm, known for his athletic ability. Showing the three ball. Goose Creek and Dyer need the basket. Down 11. Very early in this game, but with the defensive pressure as you see there, they force it. It looks really interesting so far as you see Chisholm hit another corner three. It's been really interesting that he knocks out a big shot, no celebration. They get right to that full court press. Oh, yeah. And it's almost a 42 type press. But after they get big stops, you see a lot of heart and emotion out of this Green Wave team. They take a lot of pride in their defensive effort. And their job is never done. You know, Chisholm hit that that shot in the corner. Then he went and played the center on that press. He's the one that runs up and down, defends pretty much everyone, no matter where that ball goes. And it just goes to show, yeah, like you mentioned, Jack, just the heart of that player and really all of them. How about the defense? How about the rebound? Jack Paul Brown in transition. Gets it right back to him, the freshman from three. Misses long, but... Wow. How about that play? Pretty good defense from the official there. And he's gonna get fouled, curious to see if it's gonna be on number 35, is here, Smith, or it's gonna be on the superstar early in the game. Yep, it's gonna be called on Jake Chisholm. Fight for a loose ball with number 10, Daquan Amber. In a big time matchup like this, a lot of energy in the building. It's been interesting to see some of his ability to shoot the three ball. Yeah. And you mentioned it, Jack. The guy's been all over the place, Jay Jism. Let's go look at just the few shots we've seen so far from him, really hitting it in all areas of the perimeter. You see him out there on the wing, in the corner, and there we go. He's going in and defending that full court press like it's his job. and. Just very impressed by the way that young man is playing here tonight. You know, as we do our homework leading up into these matchups, you go and check out Jay Chisholm on social media. It is an absolute treat. He's a high flyer, alley oop, dunks, but the ability to shoot three ball is not something that we discovered in our studies this week, but Chisholm averaging 13 on the year. He's one of the sole starters in this lineup that hasn't made an all region team. Well, he is well on his way with his performance so far in their last non conference matchup. 
see the double. Shane Potts unable to handle the pressure. And it's going to be a backcourt violation. I think Coach Long so far in this game has thrown a lot of defensive schematic looks towards Goose Creek's way that they haven't really been able to handle. They obviously have the athleticism play man, but you've seen him drop back in that 1-3-1 one one cause a lot of problems like that. I think so too, and it doesn't really matter so far what look they do throw at this Goose Creek team. They are going to be in your face with that pressure, suffocating like we had mentioned earlier. Suffocating like right there exactly. as you see. Brandon Burgess, the 5'8 senior, unable to handle it. With just 359 to play, Somerville leads 24 to 13. We're back with the 2023 Mike D.V. Charleston High School Hoops driven by Crew Chevrolet. We want to give a huge special shout out to all of our sponsors throughout tonight's broadcast. An absolute pleasure to be able to do work alongside them as they're able to make these players' dreams come true. To be able to play on TV in front of friends and family. But tonight, points in the paint. Brought to you by West Shore Home, America's most admired home remodel and brand. We talk about a lot of these sponsors tonight, Natalie. Truly is incredible what they're able to pull out. These coaches, these players, the opportunity to play on TV in front of a lot of people that might not otherwise get to see them play. I was going to say, in front of a great atmosphere here in the creek. I know this is a rivalry game. You expect a big crowd, but they're extra loud here tonight from the creek of Goose Creek. You see the pressure cause some problems again. You see Brandon Burr just checking in. He's a sweet left-handed shooter for the Gators. Making a mistake that we'd like to forget here soon. With just 350 to play in the same quarter. Now has there been a guy that stood out to you tonight that's been maybe more impressive than you maybe could have imagined? I mean, so far, I would say the shooter we've seen, and what a bucket that is. Okay. Melvin Teal with the physicality, able to finish that shot. And Jack, I don't know, I was just about to say, you know, the guy who's been shooting it very well all night, but you know, Melvin Teal's making a making a name for himself here today. It's gonna be hard to pick our player of the game, but. Still early for that, but for Still me, it's early. been this guy. As we take a look at that old replay by Cruz Chevrolet, on Rivers, you get a friend of the car business. It's been Melvin Teal. I'm telling you right now, you look at the numbers off the paper, but 6-2-205 for a sophomore is unheard of. But he plays the game for a sophomore as he heads to the charity strike to knock down his third at free throw brought to you by Holy City Heating and Air. We provide solutions for every season as Melvin Teal is able to convert the old school three-point play. I'm telling you right now, for a sophomore, it almost seems unfair to be that size, see the game in slow motion. For me, he's been unbelievable to watch. I think so too, and that was one thing that David Long uh -oh. had told us. Watch but let's the high see. Oh, smart business decision. Elijah Bates makes sure the ball doesn't leave the hand. A really smart, savvy play from the senior to not let Chisholm get up off the ground because if he did, it was going to be a problem. Let's see. You can see he was getting ready for liftoff. Bates, smart play from the senior to make sure 
He wasn't getting easy too. Pretty sure this place would have erupted if that one went down. And we are here in Goose Creek, but there's a lot of Somerville faithful here tonight to cheer on their guys. CJ Chisholm heading the line and knock down the Holy City heating and air free throw. I'm telling you, a healthy blend of athleticism and obviously a lot of time in the lab. These kids are absolutely skilled, but it's been their, po their composure to handle a lot of pressure, big time game. Unfazed by the moment. So Joel Cor Brown with the cross court pass to Hamlet in the corner. But again, the pressure too much as Yannick Smith's uh -huh. gonna have a fast break. It's taken time. Yes, sir, he doesn't have a grid on it, but he's got special buttons brought to you by a low country cross space as Shane Potts is gonna try to answer. But it's gonna be out of foul and Hezekiah Smith. That's a growing man rebound. But how about this one on the other end? Yannick Smith, one foot, and take off. I'm telling you. Now, I think he was looking down at the ground. I think so, too. You definitely see he got up there. Also making uh, a name for him. We've been talking about Chisholm all night. You've been talking about Teal. He said, wait, I'm the star. Remember me? <laughs> here I am. And he's demanding that attention here tonight. Somerville with just 2.55 left in the second quarter. Takes a commanding 31 to 13 lead. It'll be interesting as they head to halftime. The Goose Creek can just find a way to cut it to single digits as they head to halftime. Try to build some momentum. It's a really nice play in the passing lanes as Elijah Bates is able to pick one clean. You're right there, Yannick Smith. The athletes speak for themselves. A two time All Region player. He was All State last year. All Region player of the year in the Road Country last year. And again, how about Chisholm? Picks the pocket. And the finish on the other end. Goose Creek has had no answers for this press now with Chisholm and Smith and Teal at the front of that press. No, and I say we're starting to see some uncharacteristic turnovers from Goose Creek. Yes, we've talked about the, the intensity of that Somerville full court press all day, but we're seeing some pretty, pretty passes we, or on turnovers we haven't seen. Come on. Come on. Look at him cock it back. You don't think this game means something? How about the junior again? And it's the diamond press that's setting up another West Shore Holmes point the paint. Those are maybe the loudest two points of the night. It's finally Bruce Creek. Unable to break this press as Yannick Smith walks over this. Look at his lips. He was fired up. He thought he had another one. Another breakaway dunk. But you're seeing maybe the youth of Shane Potts, Jaquel Brown. Haven't seen athletes like this in the Diamond Press really yet this season. Yeah, and you're really starting to see it on their face. Gassed, I think, is a good word for it right now. And how can you not be with this, this pressure that Somerville has not let up on at all? Yep. Yannick Smith knew it. He knew it almost immediately as he picks up his second foul on a reach-in call. But I think that's a foul that David Long is going to be okay with. You're going to see Yannick Smith again. Gosh. He's starting to feel himself a little bit, fair to say. I, I think I'd have to agree with you there. Seven first half points as Coach Blake Hall is going to call a timeout as you see Yannick Smith heading back to the sidelines. His teammates fired up for him. I'm sure in practices, they're pretty prone to seeing that young man take off a flight. I think so too, and I'm just glad we all get to see it on full display here, Jack in front of a packed house here in Goose Creek, and then, of course, on the airways, so. I got a special shout-out to you. You mentioned the airways. You see the cameraman that just left the angle right there. It's Will Chitty. And Coach Long gave us really an entire full roster. You mentioned, you see a social media guy. In the world of technology and social media, Will Chitty has kind of revolutionized the way that teams tell their stories here in the low country. You go take a look at some, some of those social media for yeah. all sports across the board. It really does look like a Division One sports page. I was just going to say, you compare it to the best of the best at the college level, not only <laughs> even at the high school level. Really, I don't think we can compare it to anything here, or at least what we we know to be really true here in the low country in terms of covering high school sports. But Somerville, they do it, and they do it big, and they do it right. It might seem trivial to those at home. Like, what does social media have to do with basketball and really any athletics? But it matters to these kids. I'm not saying that you're going to recruit at the high school level. What Coach Long has been able to provide as a professional type of environment for his guys to excel. excel. 
and it really matters in all ends. But with just a minute 30 to play, down by 24 with just 13 first half points. Now, what do you need to see from the Gators to try to claw back in this game? You know, I think they just need a bucket. I think they're at the point where they just need some faith. How about that? That is exactly what they need in this team. Capable of making this one a game. It's just had been several minutes without a bucket from this team. So hopefully they're able to play a hard, tough minute 13 right now. And it starts right there with rebounding. Absolutely. As we see Dante Taylor, those are two huge West Shore home points in the paint right there on the second effort. Look at all the Big Somerville bodies there in the paint, too. He wanted that rebound. Is Dante Taylor, the 6'4 senior, 185 pounds, a long, lean, strong forward. He's got a future at the next level to play basketball for a long time, but they're going to need a lot more of that to get back in this one. We see our head official, Greg Seymour, alongside assistant official Cedric Weber, steps up to try to knock down the Third free throw from the charity strike from Holy City hitting there, and he's able to do so to cut it to 21. Let's see if they can get a stop here as we have the clock tick down in this final minute. But again, Jack, you can see it on their faces. They're tired. Can't say I blame them, but. Get tired, maybe a little bit surprised. This is a Goose Creek team that's 14 and 1 this season. It's played a very difficult out of conference schedule. Very capable of getting back in this game as you see KJ Brown with a nice save. A loose ball scrum. Gonna be won by the young freshman, Jaquel Brown. Possession arrow in favor of the Gators, but I think they're almost taken aback by the athleticism, the speed, the length of that press from Somerville. You've heard Natalie and I mention a couple times tonight if you're listening at home, but some of them are running a diamond press. You're not going to see it here with a 21 point lead before they go. They're going to sit back in that 1 3 1 they've ran, but that diamond press with a guy at the front, two in the middle, one in the back, and then the center far end. The athletes that they're able to provide at the front of that defense truly is like a quarterback trying to dissect the defense on the green island. So for the likes of Elijah Dates, who's a senior who's seen it all, been it all, Jaquel Brown has been a very very capable point guard that's impressed many. Maybe one of the better freshmen in the state. He's been unable to pick it up as Sam Crabtree, the senior, again, just trying to force a pass. You see Elijah Dates, just let me know, hey man, take what the defense gives you. And in this one three one it's a look that I bet they haven't seen before. Right. And I think that just goes to show that this Somerville team has made Goose Creek so uncomfortable. Those are passes or really turnovers we're not used to seeing from this Goose Creek team. You see the big fella, Yazir Smith, fighting for the rebound. It's going to stay in possession of the green wave. But you mentioned being uncomfortable, Natalie, as we talked to Blake Hall, who's built such an incredible culture. If you know basketball in the low country, you know any game with the Goose Creek Gators is an uncomfortable matchup for any backcourt, right? He talked about what this team culture means. Embrace being an uncomfortable. An incredible opportunity for growth occurs when you're uncomfortable. So down 21, heading into the second half. This is the kind of test that his team, I bet, maybe needed. As we're going to see a little late ball scrub fighting for it between Daquan Amlet and Melvin Teal. Love to see the fight. Down 21, doesn't matter. Scoreboard doesn't matter. It's about playing for the pride of your team as they're taking care of each other. And pride was one thing, culture was another. Both of these coaches, they're so in, in tune with having their guys do the little things. And you see it right there, two guys on the floor, every single one of their players ran over to that guy, picked him up, egged him on, said, hey, let's get back up and met in their huddles and they're ready to play a hard next six seconds of this half. And you can see this is a guy that's been around the coaching ranks for a really long time. Coach Blake Hall, who played his college basketball coach in college played overseas professionally in Slovenia. He's an incredible basketball mind, but why he's so revered in the community is the, is the grit that his team stands for. It's understood every time you get a matchup with Coach Blake Hall's Gators that you know they're gonna get their best. He didn't care what happens on the scoreboard, by the way, tonight. He just wants to make sure that his team is giving it his best, as that's an awesome game now, but not to sound trivial, but a great pass from Mike Jenkins is Jay Chisholm is able to finish that basket around. And now it was all green wave all the time in the first half. I know, and I'm a little taken aback by it, too. 
I mean, what a half we just saw, Jack. As we're heading to halftime, it was all this young man, Yannick Smith, take it off. Two big dunks in the first half. Summer leads 39 to 16. How can you like somebody so much who made you look to my TV Charleston's high school hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Welcome back to Goose Creek High School. Jack DeLong shall sit alongside Natalie Spala and in a top 10 matchup in the state of South Carolina in the first half. It was all Somerville Green Wave, 39 to 16 over Goose Creek, second ranked Gators. But as we head into halftime, we get to get to really the low country's favorite part. It's the David Aylor Law Office Scholar of the Week for Somerville. We take a look at the superstar football scholar athlete Keith Elmore Jr. A 4.98 GPA, a three-year football letterman on a Somerville team that made it to the Low Country State Finals. An all-region football player, second team all-low country in 2020, 2021, and in the 2022 season. He was also an all-state honorable mention, but that 4.9 GPA, Natalie, absolutely incredible stuff. Kudos to you, Mr. Keith Elmore Jr. And that is something we love to see. I, I, sometimes I look at these GPAs and I'm like, wow, I didn't know they could go that high, Jack. I, I know mine was <laughs> never that high. <laughs> As we take a look on the Goose Creek sideline, the Scholar Athlete, Daler Ayler Law Office, Scholar Athlete of the Week. It's going to be Elijah Dates. We saw a lot of that young man in the first half, a 3-3 GPA, the belt, stud athlete on the floor. But he was a top five senior in Class 5A. 2022 All-Region Team, 2002-21 All-Region Champion. But... How about just a week ago, Natalie, in the Low Country Round Ball MVP, he had 30 in the championship game, but that 3-3 GPA is what has him as our David Ayler, Law Office Scholar Athlete of the Week. And here in the Low Country in just the last week, we give kudos to David Ayler and his Law Office that they're dealing with a really tragic death. Uh, as they lost David Ayer just this past week, what he's meant to this broadcast, what he's meant to the entire community as a whole, the lives that he's touched, the high school athletes that he's impacted, truly priceless. Exactly. Let's go and take a look because our Scott Eisberg, he put together a, a wonderful tribute. He's a guy who has worked with David Ayer for countless years at this point. He's a man that's synonymous with, of course, high school athletics. So let's go and take a look, Scott. How can you like somebody so much who made you look so bad standing next to them? He, he can dress now. He was fly uh, from head to toe. So you're right, Scotty. He was definitely one of the, if not the best dressed, uh, not attorney, just person, you know, in Charleston. <laughs> the suits always fit. We always joke the checks he signed would never fit into an ATM, but their size, oh so indicative of his heart. It made college financially easier so that I could focus more on studying in school. He gave and gave generously. He cared and cared deeply. He watched the video entries. A cake or a pie sent his way. He wanted the best to represent his name, his firm. This, just a sampling, I'd say. David did a heck of a job. I am a senior at Clemson University. I will graduate in May with a degree in chemical engineering. 
I already have a job lined up. At USC Upstate, my major is exercise science with a focus in occupational therapy. Study, I'm, I'm at South Carolina State University. Um, I'm studying in physical education. Just, I'm just grateful that he chose me to uh, win that award that, that is just it's special. Not, it's even more special now. A mark forever made on prep sports, a gaping hole to be tangibly felt at his other athletic passion, College of Charleston hoops in the midst of their best season ever. Just gonna be just not the same, uh, having that, feeling that little tap in the back of the head as he would always walk behind our, our broadcast booth. And he would always come up where I was at the DJ booth in College of Charleston from his seats in the front of every single game and make sure he said, what's up? You know, he was that kind of guy that give you that tap on the mm -hmm. Everybody is giving this man praise for his giving nature. If there's one way to be remembered, it's that way. David Ayler, the life of the party, that won't change. And I, pretty much every single Kuzi in the low country had his uh, logo on it, for sure. So, um, you know, we got to find those ways to remember him. And, and that's one of the uh, absolutely great way, you know, I get to put him on a, on a beer and be like, dang, David, I'm gonna have a beer with you today. Just help people who, who uh, needed help. And, you know, for that, I think he truly is gonna be missed because he was just a great person that we all kind of had that relationship. Everybody felt like, they were friends with David Ayler. I certainly was, and man, I'll miss looking oh so bad next to a pal who lived life oh so well. My TV Charleston's High School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Welcome back to Goose Creek High School. Jack DeLongshaw joined alongside Natalie Spiler in that first half. It was all Summer Hill 3 Web 39, Goose Creek 16. Sounds good. Welcome back to my TV, Charleston's High School. Hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet in that first half in his top 10 matchup. It was all green wave all the time, Natalie. Heading into that second half, we look to see as we take a look back at the first half highlights. 
Well, early and often points from both of these teams. Goose Creek kept it extremely close, down one, two, three points at one time, and they were really scoring from all aspects of the floor, inside, outside. But then, Jack, you mentioned it, Summerville Green Wave. Early and often, all the time, especially in that second quarter where they look at a pretty extensive lead as we head into this one. 39-16 lead, but you mentioned it, Adderley. Really eye-opening stuff. They held the Gators to just three points in the second quarter as we head to break. As we welcome everybody back to my TV, Charleston High School Hoops, group by Coo Chevrolet. Ladies and gentlemen, the scoreboard a little lopsided, but this is a top 10 matchup. As you see Blake Hall sitting on Goose Creek sideline, everyone in Low Country in South Carolina knows this game is far from over. Because Natalie, we all know that Blake Hall is going to have his guys ready for a super competitive second half. I think so, too. I think adjustments were definitely made at halftime. They had to be made at this rate, right, Jack? But... Goose Creek is a team that will never let off the gas, so we're just going to see. And there you go. Cue that one up from Shane Potts from behind the arc. And there's three more points on that board for Goose Creek, couldn't and they were have, much needed. Couldn't have found a better start. The <laughs> freshman to sophomore, the game's starting to slow down for the youngsters as they're playing some of the better athletes in the entire state. John Crow Brown to Shane Potts. Oh, how about Dante Taylor, the defensive effort? Yannick Smith on it, he get away from it. It's going to be a five second. As we go back to that David A. office replay. Shane Potts, four feet by the line. I, I was going to say, quarter. look the distance on that one, young man. But the youngster. We Great like it. start to the half, but you knew coming out of halftime that Coach Hall would have his guys ready. Now, when we spoke to him earlier this week, he talked about the difference between players and competitors. And that's the culture that he's built here. And Dante Taylor takes a three from the corner. Unable to grab, but Coach Hall's got competitors on his sidelines. Regardless of the outcome of the game, they'll compete to that final whistle blows. And you can look at that Goose Creek bench. They're standing up. They are ready to get their guys back into this one. It's going to take everyone, top to bottom. Everyone's going to need to play their role, play their part. And effort right now is really a good thing to see right now on that Goose Creek sideline. Absolutely. So Yannick Smith getting that little nice one foot, two foot floater. But something to note, comes down with his third foul already in the game. It'll be interesting to see if Coach David Long removes his star junior, goes to the bench early. Looks like he's going to let him play with three fouls as Jack Crow Brown tries to split the double team. It's going to be Jay Chisholm comes up with it. Floater in the lane, no good. Brown with the rebound. This time, splitting the press works. Pots on the other end. Pull up the transition, no good. But again, it's the freshman on the floor, Johnny Carlson Mayhem. I don't hate that shot selection. I really don't. You know, they had kind of a little bit of momentum here in the opening minutes of this third quarter. You already seen him hit one and three behind the arc. We're looking for a little momentum on this Goose Creek sideline and all emphasis really nice right now is to gain control and these first opening minutes jack are going to be so crucial for this goose creek team absolutely 
all of our boots junkies at home understand and probably remember the old drill that they did growing up. Score, stop, score. Right, just play that game within the game. Go down, get a bucket, and then on the other end, just get one stop at a time, claw your way back in it. But it's going to be tough to do with some lights out shooting. As you see, Jay Chisholm short on the three ball there. He did miss a lot of those open ones in the first half. Of the time. There you know, not at all. But if there's a momentum shift we're going to see, then Goose Creek's going to need to see it now. They only scored three points, three points in that second quarter, Jack. And that was, of course, the difference maker when you look at that scoreboard right now. Yep. And this was the difference maker in the first half for some of them. You see him line up in that diamond press again. Shane Potts on the inbound, but just look at the length and size. Super savvy player, Mike Jenkins at the head of it. Jay Chisholm all over the floor, but right behind him. The All-State receiver, Yannick Smith, who's played a lot of cornerback and safety today, it feels like, defensively for the Green Wave. Nice little dribble penetration into the paint, and then a kick, little kick to the outside. Making the defense move is, uh, is really going to be Goose Creek's bread and butter here because so many times in that first half, Somerville, we've said it so many times, they just made them super uncomfortable. You're seeing turnover after turnover in some instances for the Gators, which isn't something you see very often for this team, a team that is often very composed. Absolutely, you can see that it's already shown the difference as you saw Elijah Bates there with a really nice uh, drive and dash. But again, it's a lot of that guy in the first half. Yannick Smith. The corner three ball. Knocked down. That's his 12th of the game. And how about the block from the other end from Jake Chisholm? But the champs respond. Unable to hit Lavarius Major. But that's what's so impressive is this team as you see Melvin Teal in transition to the way up the team of Shane Potts. That's the matchup of the matchup I was really interested in. Adding. You saw Melvin Teal. BB, as his coach likes to call him, going right at Shane Potts. Those are two of the better sophomores in the state of South Carolina. Yeah, and that was a match we were particularly excited for. As Potts, a nice head fake. Oh, wow. Able to get it to go. Watch this guy go. Yep, those are two hot flyers, Chisholm and Potts. Second time tonight, you've seen Goose Creek foul Chisholm before he's able to take off as we take a look at the David Ayler law office. Look at it, the game's in slow motion for him. Melvin Teal right at Potts. Potts not wanting to foul, but the sheer size of Melvin Teal. As we see Jay Chisholm heading the line. These free throws brought to you by Will Lee Gray Opportunity School. A rich tradition of individualized learning as Chisholm misses the front end of the free throw. But you know now when you go back to that replay, you saw Melvin Teal, one of those prized sophomore recruits in the state of South Carolina. You mentioned earlier in the game nicknames. Coach David Long is trying to create a family style environment within that locker room. He said his nickname for Melvin Teal is BB. Of course, we had to ask him, BB, where'd that come from? So it's actually a nickname that has progressed over time. BB used to be Big Baby. It's not because he had a, a temper tantrum or anything like that. No, he's just a big guy, but a young guy. So that was his nickname. But Jack, that nickname progressed. It is now Big Baller. Spines. His second three in the second half, his eighth in total. As we see Charles Bear, the third, is going to foul Josiah Taylor as we take a look at the David Allen replay. Look at him. Boom, steps right into it. That's Elijah Dates' third assist already in the second half. He's starting to see the game. The senior taking over, dishing out to the youngsters. Shane Potts makes a pay as they cut that lead back to 20. But now the people are going to be here at the nickname. Big baby, the big baller. Big baller. But we're not finished there, Jack, no. Head coach David Long, by the end of the year, he wants that nickname to uh, progress into Big Bruiser, and he wants him to be physical. He wants him to be that big body that he, he is, and he wants him to play exactly like that, physically and really in your face type D. Charles Bale, the third, picks up his second fouls. He begins to play the second half really physically. Only one way to answer with some of those. You see Charles Bear, the third check in. We also saw Gabriel White, the sixth grade senior for Goose Creek check in. That's a big body and a really stud athlete, as you see there, jumping in some passing lanes. Coach Hall emptying one of his better athletes on the floor to match some of those athletes. And we're starting to see really, we talked about it all 
first half, that suffocation of that Somerville D, but now we're seeing it from the Goose Creek side, so yep. good to see you, Jack. And with just 3.51 to play, you see Yannick Smith at three ball, continues to lead as Somerville leads 44 to 24. Get six, probably three or four assists. I like giving it to the guy. It's, it's tough. My TV Charleston High School Hoops, driven by Crew Chevrolet. Welcome back to Goose Creek High School. Jack DeLong shall sit alongside Natalie Smiley as we take a look at Somerville's head coach, David Long, in his 11th season at Somerville High School. He's a second career coach. He was working in construction. He was making oh, million dollar houses. But the young guy needed to get back into the game. From Savannah, Georgia, played ball his entire life growing up. Found a coaching job at Laney High School. Little known high school that had some guy named Michael Jordan play there. So you see the three in the corner. I had the big rebound on the other end. Gabriel White making his presence felt too. Big time offense rebound. Is it gonna get Mike Jenkins his first foul in the game? But back to coach David Long. He found his first coaching job after resurrecting his coaching career at Laney High School. That Michael Jordan guy pretty good, played there for a while. But coach Long made his way to the low country area. Coached under Coach Greg Elliott at Somerville for about eight years, and he's been the head coach here for now 11. And what he's been able to do with the athletes there has been revolutionary here in the Low Country. As we see Gabriel White knock down the first of the Will Lou Gray free throws here in the third quarter. We're not going to talk about the second free throw, though. We go with that, <laughs> I didn't see it. We're good. <laughs> A little dusty in here. All right, Natalie, we're just 3.39 to go here in the third quarter. Some of commanding 44 to 25 lead is Melvin Teal, so strong with the rock. What do you need to see out of Goose Creek to find a way to get back to the game? I think what we've seen in the, really the minutes of this third quarter, Jack, that we can admit, offense not working for this team in the second quarter, only scored three points. But you saw it on the defensive end as two. They looked tired, they looked gassed. They were really ready to get into that locker room. But in these opening minutes of this third quarter, a new team, some juice. They're playing hard defense. They're working to get themselves back into this game. Shots are starting to fall. So I think, like you mentioned, it's it's a game of possession after possession. And that's a pass I know Jaquel Brown, he wants back, but see if he can get a defensive stop. How about the pass? How about the vision from Melvin Teal as he drops it off to Jay Chisholm? That's his 18th point of the game, but Teal, that's a big time pass down low as Gabriel White's heading back to the charity strike. Really strong around the basket. Gabriel White, he's brought a lot of energy in just the last three minutes of this game. And sometimes that's what you need, and that's more or less what we expected. We knew we were going to see a lot of names, a lot of guys, but even the guys that don't typically get a lot of minutes, this is such a mature group. So many guys can fill slots that are needed to be filled. It doesn't matter if you're the star, like Yannick Smith or the guy you, that we're used to hearing his name all the time. A guy can come off the bench and, and give you exactly what you star in that moment. As Gabriel White misses the front end of the charity stripes, those will lead three free throws. Give him a little bit of a problem the last time through, but you saw the West Shore home points in the paint. This guy's got a couple of them. It's a big body, 6'3", good senior. 
can really get up off the ground too. He's brought a nice presence in the paint so far in the second half. It's Melvin Teal comes down with the rebound after free throw. Coast to coast, corner three. How about that? Wow. From number 10, the junior, KJ Brown. The 5'11 junior, corner pocket three. But we've seen just the second assist in just the last 30 seconds of play from BB Melvin Teal. And that's just pretty basketball. And no one picked up ball. No one's going to stop him. Hey, make it deep into that paint, then find a friend to pass that ball to. And they're getting three as a result of that hard, hard play. Absolutely. Dave Kwanama, the lefty. Nice response on the other end. But how about Teal again? Defense faded to the corner. Thought he was going to find him there. Teal finds the open man. But Shane Potts, a nice block. And looking for another one. Yes, sir. Don't let him get to the right shoulder. He says a nice, slight lefty baby hook to cut the lead back to 20. Coach David Long with the 20 point lead wants a timeout. He loves what he's seen that his team on the offensive end, but defensively, maybe his team not getting back all the way as we check out the David Ayler. Just look at the guard. athleticism on that pass, Jack. All the way down to the baseline, nowhere to go. Goose Creek players had picked him up, but that's okay when you got a friend in the corner that knows how to knock down a shot. Absolutely. KJ Brown capitalizing on the beautiful pass from Melvin Teal. Teal, just a sophomore. Already gone on an unofficial visit to NC Central, and you can start to see why the recruits, college coaches at the next level are taking a look at the young 6'2", 205-pound sophomore guard. And he's a guy that David Long had said, he's a guy that just flies under the radar at times. He's a guy that doesn't always get the spotlight, get the recognition he deserves, but he does the little things. He does the tough things, and he does the things that need to be done in order to, to make sure your team walks away with a victory, or if you look at the scoreboard, it's the reason they're up 30 points right now, or 20 points, rather, excuse me. But he's a guy that knows how to get it done, and those little things are the things that are most important often, Jack. Yeah, absolutely. We talked about a teal average of 14 points, five rebounds, and four assists a game. But the stat that stood out to us is we were doing a homework. How about that? But the eighth grader, Kato Miller. Getting in on the fun. How about that? Everyone scoring tonight for the Green Wave. Kato Miller capitalizing. We're going to see a steal on the other end. Miller again. A block from Charles Bayer, the third, but Kato Miller. An impressive 6-3, eighth grader. Boom. Coach Long talked about how he had to get these guys up. He knew that a guy like Kato Miller or a guy like J.J. Taylor, a freshman, would be studs on the JV team. But the invaluable time practicing with some of these studs at the varsity level and now getting minutes at the varsity level would be priceless for the development of their game. And that's a big thing, a, a, a big strategy that Somerville has is working and building towards the future. They don't have seniors. They don't have nine seniors like Goose Creek this Goose Creek team has. And, and yes, that is often an advantage for so many of teams that have so much veteran leadership, but not the case over at Somerville. So when you got different guys, different levels of, of veteranship and of experience, you got to make sure that you're working and your eyes are on the future, and that's what you're building towards. Absolutely. Now, you're spot on, too. And especially with the style of play they like to go up and down, really fast, press full court. You know, he talked about the, the full vision, long vision in sight, what this team hopes to achieve later on in the playoffs. They need 11, 12 guys. Right. They can't play six, seven dudes and burn their guys out. They need them to be at their best when their best is needed as region play just is right around the corner. You know how to play 11, 12 guys. As we see number 22, the junior Sheldon Glenn checking in. Again, the 13th player to play now for some of them tonight. On cue with what we're saying, they gotta have a full team effort in order to achieve what they want to. And Long knows that is quite an advantage as Delvin Davis getting in on the stat sheet himself. Long said it's an advantage not every team has. Not a lot of teams have the depth that Somerville does. And if, if you see a team like that, Jack, then please let me know because they're just proving to us how deep their bench is and, and really the value of that. Absolutely. You see Delvin Davis there with a really strong points that have been brought to you by West Shore Home, America's most admired home remodeling brand. So he's able to miss the front end an opportunity of capitalizing the three-point play from the really, really great free throw line. But, you know, as some of those now able to extend the lead again with their second string on the floor, Bruce Creek looking to answer. An opportunity with this game almost out of reach. A lot of time left. Whole fourth quarter to play. 
but a developmental piece to this game now. With a freshman Jaquel Brown, sophomore and Shane Potts, how do they respond in these moments of the game? See, some of them sitting back in that two three zone is giving Goose Creek a lot of problems. Jaquel Brown, nice dump off. It's gonna be Dante Taylor. He's gonna be fouled as he's gonna head back to the Willow Gray free throw line. And again, we see they've thrown a lot of different zones at him. You saw him sit that one two zone, or that excuse me, that one three one. That time the two three, and Jaquel Brown just tries to force a pass. He's able, not able to squeeze it in. Taylor misses the front end of the Will Lou Gray free throw. Free throw, excuse me. Remember, reminder folks, Will Lou Gray Opportunity School is a rich tradition of individualized learning. Thank you to Will Lou Gray for their sponsorship. Sponsoring high school hoops here in the Low Country. See Taylor pressing up on JoJo. Taylor, full court. A handful to have to deal with in the backcourt. And he's the one we mentioned in the first half, Jack. Just the explosive movement you don't see from a guy of that stature very often. Look at that. Strong guy. Big man rebound from Potts as he's able to bring it up the court. Again, the 2 3 causing problems again for the Gators, but ends up in Dante Taylor's hand. Unable to get the three to fall as Shane Potts is going to be charged with an over the back foul. And hats off, you, you got to give Somerville the credit there. Doesn't matter where the ball is on what side of the court, that back side always ready. They've got active hands, they are ready to go, and almost picked off that pass. Tell me that zone look with just how streaky and long these Somerville defenders have been. So tough to deal with as Jaquel Brown says, no sir, not at the end of third quarter. As we're about to head and kick it to break, Somerville commanding the 54 to 30 lead. Saw some Shane Potts early, but that's some of the bench just too deep here in high school hoops. Driven by Crew Chevrolet. It's obviously not. Welcome back to my TV, Charleston's High School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet here at Goose Creek High School. Jack DeLongshell sitting alongside Adam Spiller. Now we take a look at Coach Blake Hall, one of the most well-respected coaches in really the entire state of South Carolina. We know that his team is going to be ready to fight here in the fourth. Yeah, Hall's always calm, cool, collected, and that is exactly how he wants his guys to be at all times. He doesn't want emotions to, to really take control of this when you look at the scoreboard, and that's something that, yeah, you get frustrated. You're down this much, and especially uncharted territory for this Goose Creek team who has only lost one game this year and by one point. So to be down this much, it's, it's new to that. How about that? The strong move down low. How about the West Shore home point to the paint from Melvin Teal. Starting to make his presence felt. It's a BB. It's a bad man right here. The big bruiser. 
Not sure if we can outwit that status of Coach Long will have it, but he loves that AM1 finish as he's waving at the camera there. Melvin Teal heading to the Will Lou Gray opportunity to score free throw line to try to convert the AM1 finish. You might have to ask Coach Long that at the end of the day. You know, Teal's done pretty much everything that he needs to do to set his guys up for success. He might be might be time to upgrade to that big bruiser status. I'm telling you, Teal with nine points, already five assists as well. You're gonna see that something press. Melvin Teal fired up. I'm telling you, excited after a big bucket. But they show so much emotion on the defensive end, which is so rare in a high school player. Melvin Teal running the point guard four and nine, five and four, and, excuse me, nine, five, four tonight, averaging 14, six and five, well on pace. But he said it, he's a big baller, but we're gonna have to ask him. I've been shocked by the sheer size and potential of the big bruiser. Mike Jenkins long and follows up on the offensive rebound in. Nice dish to the youngster, Yazir Smith. So he's all able to finish. And Jack, you mentioned the emotion, especially evident after that defensive takeaway. And I feel like that's, you can say that for most of these, these plays tonight is that on the defensive end, that is when they're most excited. That is when they, they start clapping, they get into it. That is what really drives this team, the defensive efforts. You hear it all the time, defense drives offense and, and really evident here tonight, but it's good to see defense getting the love it deserves, you know? Absolutely. When you hold the second team in the state to just 30 points through three quarters, yeah, we're going to talk a lot of defense. And if you do the deep dive and you take a look at some of those stats, yeah, you know, you've got Yannick Smith averaging 19 a game. You got Melvin Hill averaging 14. Jay Chisholm has him 13. How about Shane Potts? My other big time three from downtown. That's 11 for him tonight. And he's he got a the pretty stroke, Jack. I hate to cut you off there, but just chef's kiss when you see that ball leave that young man's hand he puts a, probably the perfect amount of arc on that you see it right there nothing but net beautiful beautiful Lovely. looking unfazed not ready to give in that's it to 20 30 but you're right you spot on it is a really pretty jumper you see another one from the corner high arc and dante taylor with another offensive rebound fight looking for some west shore paint points in the paint unable to get the fall but you know, what they've been able to do on the defensive end is you see a really nice pass in the corner from Mike Jenkins. We talked about what they're able to do points per game. Truly stands out to have three guys averaging over three per game is the youngster, Razier Smith, trying to get in on the front from downtown. But it's Jake Chisholm with the West Shore points, points in the paint off another offensive rebound. That's 20 for Chisholm. We haven't heard a lot from him in the second half. We love the pass in there from Goose Creek. So selfless, but and this is why Somerville is so dangerous. They move the ball so well, able to to rebound there, and, and that's something you don't want to see if you're Goose Creek. They were starting to gain some momentum there, but you can't give up those second and third chance opportunities. She Melvin Teal. It's a hockey line change for Somerville. They check in with their second squad. We're gonna see Jacob Brown and exit the floor is Brandon Burgess. Gabriel White check back in for the Gators. Elijah Dates and Daquan Amlet join him. But as we were talking about, is it Elijah Dates? Corner three, not ready to call it yet for him. That's a big three for him, confidence-wise, as they get ready for each play next week. But now that he's really doing a homework. The stat that really jumped out to me is that three fashion off the side of the back where some of them, five guys averaging over five rebounds a game. That's truly an incredible statistic when you take a look at really college basketball landscape. All these youngsters think that they need to get the next level by scoring the basketball. This team, so role oriented, similar to what Bruce Creek does as well, so role oriented and how they attack the game. And that goes to show just the competitors that are a part of each and every single one of these players rebounding. You know, it's it's not glamorous. It's not the three points. It's not the dunking. It's not the things that get you that recognition. Rebounding, you got to be gritty. You got to be dirty. You got to want to be in there and want to be physical. And that is something that all of these players want to do. And it's super rare when you got a team like that that not often want to just want to one up each other. Absolutely. Shane Potts steps the line. He's able to knock down the first. Free throw brought to you by Holy City Heating and Air. We provide solutions for every season. So he looks to knock down the second, unable to get it to fall. 
Daquan Amwick, last touch, maybe Somerville possession, but just some of the names, Somerville Scott, rebound the basketball, Delvin Davers averaging six a game. Mike Jenkins from the point guard position averaging six a game. Don't see that often from your point guard as Shane Potts. But look, love it. Natalie referred to it earlier. See Blake Hall there. Potts hits the deck. All four gamers sprinting over to him. It's the standard set here at Goose Creek. It's understood. You're going to pick your family, your brother up after hit the deck. And that's something, Jack, you and I were former players. It might not be a known, really, a point of emphasis for those who, who aren't familiar with the game, but. We've been on the floor multiple times ourselves, I can say, over the, our careers as, as former players. But when you see your team not only walk over to you and pick you up, they run over to you. They don't want you to be on that floor a second longer. They want you up, they want you ready to go, and they want you to know that they've got your back. Absolutely. And he's just saw even leaving the floor, Shane Potts, Quell Brown picking him up, handing him a towel. It's the standard set as JoJo Taylor knocks down the first of the Gets down, knocks down both, excuse me. The Holy City hitting there, free throws. But again, you see, checking out the towel. It's not gonna pop up on a box score, but it all is the standard set. As a steal there on the other end. How about a fast break? Brought to you by Low Country Crawl Spaces. No relationships that last. The electric little run there. Burgess from the corner. The sound pop. How about the three from the corner from the senior? And I want to give Jaquel Brown credit there. Had the turnover. He's the one that came away with that rebound on the other end, able to push the ball up the floor. And then his team is getting three points as a result of that effort. Absolutely. You should see another corner for the opportunity for the Green Wave. You know, it might be 20 points with just 450 to go. But this is the last game before we can play for both teams. Every basket is building towards something. That three there from Brandon Burgess in the corner, brought to you by David Aaron Offer. Every basket means something. They're building confidence and momentum going into region play. Natalie, you know, as a former player, both these teams, despite the outcome today, all their goals and aspirations now right in front of them as region play starts next week. Exactly. And these are two teams we asked both of their coaches, hey, our state championships are is, is that front of mind for both of these teams. You don't see it too often where both of these teams top 10 right now in the state of South Carolina. But both of these coaches, they said, no, that's not our goal right now. Yes, they have aspirations and yes, that would be awesome. But it's not what they're thinking about right now. They're thinking about truly just taking one game at a time. If you're head coach David Long over there, your goal, he said, full potential, reaching our full potential. He says, and he refers to Coach K in this regard, that if you add up all of the wins, all of the championships, it doesn't always result in you reaching your full potential and vice versa. If you're unsuccessful and you perhaps don't walk away with the state championship, you can still have a successful season if you had reached your full potential. And on the other side here, looking at Goose Creek, also not front of mind for head coach Blake Holland. This is a guy who's already won a state championship. He says that would be great. Of course, we want, would love a trophy over here at Goose Creek, but it would be great if it was a byproduct of all of the hard work, of all of the effort, of all of the, the grittiness that this team puts on the floor each and every night. So it, it's interesting to see, Jack, that both of these head coaches very capable of making long state championship runs, long in the playoffs. Of course, we've got region play starting next week, but not the first thing, not the goal, really, of this team. Absolutely. You take a, a look at what Coach Hall and, and what we kind of took from him and what we were able to gather from our interview. But, you know, what he was most proud of, an alumni game that they were able to put together before the season. Guys that had pride in this program that wanted to come back and still feel a part of what they were building towards. As you see a selfish pass and a corner three opportunity for Burgess. But an alumni game that they put on that he wasn't able to be a part of. He's out of state, but it didn't matter because the guys that came back that played in this program, they were able to put it on and part wisdom on these youngsters that are in this program now. That's what he's proud of. That's what he's building towards. Developing young men. And uh, as you see, Yazir Smith get wrapped up in that jump ball. I don't know if that's a guy I'd like to fight over basketball with. <laughs> Perhaps not. I more likely would just let him take it. 6'4, <laughs> 250 sophomore. Burgess, another shot. Two for three from downtown from Brandon Burgess. That's eight on the night from the senior. Having one heck of a fourth quarter is number 23. And he loves that corner spot. As you see some of them start to slow things down with just four to ten to play. 
You see a foul there. I remember Gabriel, before two Gabriel White, but you take a look back at the replay. Burgess, they drew that one up for him. Gabriel White acting as the decoy, sets a nice screen, frees Burgess up. And then you see him right ready to go, right back on defense there. Found his guy, turned, ready to go. You know if you want to play basketball at Goose Creek High School, it's not about what happens on the offensive side. You got to be able to beat it up as well, and Burgess, strong point guard, is able to do so. How about this? Gabriel White, full court presence. Might be down 17, but doesn't mean Gabriel White can't play hard. Upset with the call. Makes his little back and forth as a little scuffle at half court. I love this stuff. Me too. That's the best part of the game. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. Despite the scoreboard, you see Elijah Bates walking out of it. Instilled himself as he's talking to Melvin Teal as he heads to the free throw line to try to knock down the Holy City heat and air free throws. Just a one and one, but I'm telling you, Coach Hall talked about it, preaches it with his players, the difference between players and competitors. Yes. Anybody can come play the game. But to really love it, compete, fight, take pride in the name on the front of the jersey, that's who's going to play here at this point. Melvin Teal approaches the line. Again, special shout out to Holy City hitting there. We provide solutions for every season. So he looks to knock down the front end of the one and one. Now, is there a more dangerous backcourt? You know, have just kicking off our high school hoops games. We're going to see a lot of really special players, but it's going to be tough to find a better backcourt than Melvin Teal and Yannick Smith. Yeah. You know, no words sometimes looking at this crew because they have not let up all night. And it's because of that intensity. You look at right there, you see it on Melvin Deal's face, clap, and he is ready to go, you, and he's been ready all day, Doc. Good passion on the defensive end. Melvin Teal bringing it on both ends of the court. The Jeff Crow Brown, the freshman, chasing him right in his hip. Oh. Oh, he's done it all night. He's going to throw it down, but how about the corner three from Yannick Smith? An opportunity for a four-point play heading the free throw line for the Holy City here and there. What's the last time you saw a four-point play, Yannick? Wow, it's a good question, actually. Oh, it's jealous. been a I'm minute, saying. actually. I watched a lot of college basketball this year, but if anyone's going to do it. Of course, it'd be his All-State nominee, Yannick Smith. The guy who has done each and every little thing here today. <laughs> you love to see it for him. He does it again. The Holy City in there. He knocks down the and the one. The four-point play for the All-State guard, Yannick Smith. And we're going to head to break. Just under 343 to play. Some of the leads, 66 to 43.
As we welcome you back to my TV Charleston High School Hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Friendly ride of Cruz Chevrolet on the rivers. You've got a friend in the car business. As we take a look at Coach David Long in the Somerville sideline. Natalie, he's going to be feeling pretty good at practice tomorrow. Got to be pleased with the effort that his team's getting tonight. Yeah, you see him walking up and down his bench right now. He's clapping on guys. There, it's been a long game, a long emotional game too. I mean, scoreboard aside, his team has not let up since tip. And he's, that's exactly what he want to see. Yeah, drink your water, coach, because I'm right there with you. It's exhausting watching these guys, which is hilarious to even say, but they keep you on your toes. See coach all over the sideline. Little upset for decision making there from Jaquel Brown. A freshman whose maturation process really starting to take hold. Love to see him just kind of go up, take the shot there instead of the last second pass, but a freshman with a super bright future. Elijah Dates tries to force a flow. They're unable to get it. Yannick Smith goes up, picks it, knocked down. He's done it all tonight, folks, from downtown. Inside the paint, Yannick Smith all over the floor tonight. How about on the other end, though? Not ready to give up. What a big body rebound from Jaquel Brown. Fat Lady has not sung as that's a big time. West Shore, home points in the paint. America's most admired home remodeling there. Yeah, let's take a look at this again because Shane Potts with the beauty of a shot looks good. But right there, probably one of the smaller guys on the court, Jaquel Brown, ready for that rebound and the easy lay-in on the other side. Absolutely. I think it's been the development of a young freshman. Played travel basketball here. He's really taking a step up as we take a look at our next couple weeks slate. Now we got some good ones. North Charleston at Phillip Simmons. Phillip Simmons, a couple big-time non-conference wins down the road at Lucy Beckham High School. But Fort Norchester, West Ashley, obviously a big time Friday matchup, but at first Baptist Pinewood matchup on January 27th, a lot of stars in that one. A lot of stars in this one, yeah, exactly. That first Baptist team, it'll be interesting. They've got a lot of great talent. I know Matty Four comes to mind. He's top of mind for all of the first Baptist followers and the faithful that watch that team, but it'll be good. We're just getting started, Jack. Absolutely. Over the build. How about the up there. Fast break brought to you by Low Country Crawl Spaces. Big time finish. Number 13, Lavarius Major. Strong finish. 69 47. Somerville with just 2.30 to play. Goose Creek playing as hard as it can, but Somerville, it's just been too much tonight as you see Yannick Smith so comfortable with the ball in his hands. My hat's off to this Goose Creek team. You see right here, Lavarius Major, they call him LV. He is clapping in the face of Melvin Teal. He is not ready to give up. And Jack, I got a good feeling they won't be giving up until the next 210 is off that board. Absolutely. We're going to check out our David Aaron Law. He's a replay by the name of Focus and Community Driven Injury Firm. How about y Yannick Smith? We've seen him thrown down a couple times tonight. LV Major, no fear. Takes it right into the teeth of the defense. No fear, and I love that pass coming from the backcourt. They, this is a team that wants to get out in transition too, if they have that opportunity. And Somerville, credit to them, they have not given them many opportunities for that Gator team to get out in transition. They've limited pretty, them pretty much all night tonight, but props to Goose Creek for able to get that ball out. Absolutely. Now as we see the little, not so little brother, Yazir Smith, played a really strong role tonight. Five rebounds so far for the young sophomore. 6'4", 250. Come on, are you kidding me? <laughs> a great year on the gridiron for a Summerhill team that made a, took a shot at the lower state championship with Yazir Smith. A bright future playing alongside big brother Yannick Smith as he misses the front end. The Holy City heating there free throw. Looks to knock down the second as he misses that as well. Elijah Dates grabs the rebound. Well, Dates on the other end, coast to coast, unable to get the three to fall, and it's Chisholm again. Another rebound, turns it directly over. Dates in the corner. It's been a lot of pots in the second half. Can he get one to fall? Nope. How about one more firework? What you got, Natalie? Ooh! A clean swipe of the ball from Shane Potts on the other end. Yannick Smith, oh, goodness. Jeez. These officials really let them play. 
so much to gather there. Yannick Smith on the other end, but how about the resiliency from Shane Potts to steal it on the other end? Gabe White went for a poster dunk there, huh, Natalie? I think so, too. Yeah, this one turned into a little bit of a trap meet right there, but both teams looking to slow them down. Everyone on the bench, they're up. They're congratulating and cheering on their guys. No one's giving up here tonight, Jack. No, not at all. It's not in either DNA. See Shane Potts checking back in. You see the Somerville trio checking out for probably the final time tonight with just a minute 39 to play. Wow, were they special to watch as Brandon Burgess on the reach. Inbound in, Potts from the corner. He's got another one, folks. How about 14 from Shane Potts, the sophomore? Now they called it pretty arch and three-point shot, hits it again. Yeah, he is not afraid to let it fly, and for good reason. It's a good shot. Nine times out of ten, it's going in. You know, as we look at this game, as it's wrapping up with just a minute to play, we talked to Coach Hall about it. You know, a young guard, Jaquel Brown, the ability to learn from Elijah Gates. Shane Potts, young sophomore. The ability to learn from a guy named Justin Britt, the senior, who's been on this Bruce Creek varsity team for four years. Has started almost every game since his freshman year. Justin Britt, a meniscus injury, injury early on in the year, was actually cleared by doctors today. We're sending a lot of good vibes to that young man, and he's able to make an appearance in his senior year for Goose Creek at some point in the near future. I'm sure he's going to make an impact right away. And like you said, Jack, our hat's off to that young man because he's meant so much to them over these last few years over on Goose Creek, and you know good things are coming. Absolutely. He's almost served as another coach on the bench for Coach Hall, a leader that's been able to teach and impart a lot of wisdom for these young studs. He'll bring an immediate impact once he's implemented in that lineup. Yeah, you're right. And it's one of those things that Coach Hall said was kind of a blessing in disguise. You get to see the game from a whole other perspective when you're forced to sit on the bench. Yes, he said he is chopping up the bit to get back out there and, and help his team and play amongst, amongst them. But sometimes that's great for a player. You, you develop from the sidelines. And that's often, especially if you're Justin Brent, it's a place you don't sit on very Absolutely. often because you're on the court, of course. But it's a good perspective that you, you gain. Absolutely, it's a six four guard aspirations who will surely play at the collegiate level as learning a part of the game as we see Jojo Taylor heading to the free throw line as he misses the front end of the Holy City heating and air free throw line. We provide solutions for every season at Holy City heating and air. But as we wrap this one up, we take a look at Coach Long, Natalie. How impressed were you by this Green Wave team, really, on both sides of the ball tonight? Oh, my gosh. Just really from the jump, Jack, you knew what they were going to give us tonight, but I don't think we expected the level of it and, and really from start to finish. You, I, you can find one moment in this team, at least for me, rather, that this team looked like they were foot, taking their foot off the gas. Absolutely. As we're going to see, we're just under 10 to play. The young eighth grader trapped in the corner. There he is again, Cato Miller turning it over. Elijah Bates again. You're not going to see this Goose Creek team quit as we're going to see the time run out. And Somerville with a statement win in a top 10 matchup, two versus six. Coach David Long gets the best of the in town rival Goose Creek Gators as they take a commanding win 69 to 50. Truly incredible performance tonight out of both sidelines. But wow, with the green wave, tough to handle all night long. As we're heading to break, take a couple looks to Miladi Onyx Smith tonight. Big time, six and a half, 50. We're going to kick at the break before we present the Dave All Scholar after the game, a trophy to the Summer Hill Green Wave. Camera two. Two. Cool. Thank you. Congrats, coach. Rob, come on, man. Make 
sure you're in this, Magic. You're a big part of this. TV. All right, look, act like we've been here before, even though we haven't. We are a TV. Oh, Jack's tossing me. I'll kill you too, just in case. If you don't hear him, I'll kill you, okay? Oh, okay, thank you. Please do. I don't think I can hear him. Is, are you tossing to me? That's what they said. Okay, I just didn't know. I'll toss it real quick. My TV Charleston High School Hoops turn my crew. Chevrolet High School Hoops is back in the low country. A commanding win in a top 10 matchup for the Summerhill Green Wave. A commanding win, 69 to 50. We're gonna kick it down to Natalie Spall right, on the floor right, with right, Coach cool. Long. See how they're feeling after a big time top 10 win. Well, Coach, nearly a 20 point victory from your guys, not on your home court, here at a rival's court. What does this moment mean to you? It means a lot to me, but I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about these guys right here and what it means to them to come on the road against a great team, a well-coached team, and get a big win. It means a lot to them. And we've had a tough stretch the last couple games, but we knew our schedule was tough, and they really responded, and everybody contributed and played a great game. Really happy for the kids. I want to go ahead and look at that second quarter. You limited Goose Creek to three. Three points, three points, definitely the difference maker in this one. What can you say about your guys' defensive effort from really well, start to finish? In the first quarter, we didn't do what we wanted to do. We wanted to trap and press. We were a little apprehensive. We weren't going after the ball, and we really challenged them at the quarter to get into the trapping, and that's really what flipped the, flipped the script. I want to talk about our player of the game, Melvin Teal. You call him big baby, or you used to at least. He's upgraded to big brew, or I can't say that. He's upgraded to big baller, excuse me. I want to ask, do you think he's upgraded tonight? He's still got a little work to do to get to a uh, big bruiser, but I'll take big baller any day of the week. So happy for Melvin Tilly. He does so much for our team. Doesn't get quite as much recognition as some of the higher scores, but he does all the little things, plays point. He does what coaches love, and I'm really happy for him to get a, a recognition like this. And I want to make a point of say you have so many guys that you say fall under the radar, don't get the recognition they deserve, but to be so deep and be able to have so many guys come off the bench, what does that mean for your team and what this team is capable of down the stretch well it means a lot it means more people are happy and what it means is we don't get tired in games but we also don't get tired as the season wears on I've been on teams where we didn't play that many people and it can have a residual effect and wear you down late in the year this team I think can stay fresh with the way we're playing right now so really enjoying it fresh and ready to go coach I'm gonna let you take this off my hands enjoy this with your team congrats gentlemen enjoy this win yeah. Take a look at them. That's the number six team in the state of South Carolina as they celebrate with a high school hoops trophy. Big time matchup for the Green Wave tonight. I gotta tell you, they were sixth in the state. I gotta tell you, in about a week from now, they're gonna be crashing in that top three. A lot of star power. You saw a lot of Yannick Smith tonight. You saw a lot of Jay Chilsom. But it was Melvin Teal taking home. Player of the game honors. His ability on the boards with five rebounds, 12 points. That guy did it all. This team's going to be really special. But make sure to tune in next week. North Charleston versus Phillips Simmons. Going to be a big time matchup. Special shout out to all our sponsors tonight as High School Hoops is back. Mike TV Charleston, driven by Cruz Chevrolet.